This is part two of Zeitgeist Heist, where I critique the Zeitgeist addendum, but not all of it, just the little parts, and I'm not really biasing any ideology, I'm not dissing them, just bringing out some critiques that they may or may not be able to refute. Why? Well, basically because it's a very popular movie. To the point where I can no longer consider it a cult classic based upon a number of viewers. Some of which belong to several different ideologies. There's no way you can absolutely disagree with this movie unless you're a complete dumbass, really. And... That's just what I think. Now, the thing of this is that the first critique I have for Zeitgeist Addendum after my first video is that its take on an establishment is really misleading. Now, it's true that we're naturally emergentist things emerge. They're not really supposed to be established. But there are times when things gotta be established. That's what I think. And the problem isn't as much the establishment of something, but rather the fact that once something becomes established, establishing another thing upon it, that's creating a hierarchy. Because then now you have a series of repetitive establishments that become less instantaneous, more of a structure, a fantasy structure, just like the state, but it could be any hierarchy, really. For example, there's a difference between an entrepreneur bringing in together the factors of production and then splitting, and then an entrepreneur bringing together the factors see structure and then acting passively not building upon anything other than more and more hierarchies and consolidations and sub establishments that really ruin any chance of an anarchist mode of organization he also says that he also advocates for symbioticism and that with his Venus project we're pushing away from our depressing lifestyle which kills any chance of us being happy when all really need all we really need to be happy is to understand that we're all one it's this idea that we all come from one thing and we all have some source and even if we don't have some one unit one uh, unicellular source or one big bang deity that's where all energy and we're all this big thing, we're all this one part of the universe and that when we have shit like this happening to us, this monetary based system we tend to get depressed because we feel a little disconnected and I feel that it's a little different with me and that's part of the reason why I never was 100 percent with the Big Bang Theory I feel like the Big Bang Theory is very mystical. That's the concept that a series of explosions created the world seems very centralized, whereas I advocate for something a little bit more polycentric. Instead of this one big series of explosions in the center spreading out and its continual s spread, I think that it'd be something a little bit more complex. like 
why is it that, that all these energies are pulled into exactly one place? Why can't there be one group that's pulling to another? Maybe the universe has several sub-universes that emerge from it. In either way, it's all at some point going to be one thing that's true. <clears throat> But here's the thing. I think that people are are disconnected for the same reasons. They there people are sad because they feel disconnected. But I think what they're disconnected from is something a lot smaller. I think it's a Dunbar unit, really, and not some big symbionic plane or of living that there's a limit a limited few at some point and there may be a continuum on that of people where they're interested in them because even if you were to live a very happy carefree life you gotta draw the line on being interested on some people and not being interested on others and it's not something people do because they're bad or ignorant, but it's just something that describes the Dunbar unit of the brain. And I think that fringe elements may convolute what a Dunbar unit is, because after all, I can conceptualize as much people as I want as being people. To me, I see the problem as being how will I stop, at what point will I stop conceptualizing, or at what point will I draw the very limit. And I will draw the limit at some point of people that I'm just going to stop viewing as people and look at them as some complex mode of existence. And even if you don't have this, even if you can somehow fit the entire universe into that mold that's just you someone else might be able to fit into a very modest yet functional mode some people need smaller modes some people need larger modes of conceptualization <sighs> and then comes his fetishment of the idea that the guys that create the technology are the ones that are really bringing society forward. To me, it's the philosophers. And what am I using philosophy in the sense of? What am I defining philosophy as? Well, I'm simply viewing it as critical thinking that moves beyond what I see as common sense. That is, once people try to think past common sense that they're moving to a philosophical spectrum. And I know that it's a very inductive way of thinking and it's probably incorrect, but in this context, that's what I see as people that are moving society for. That could be the engineers, the technicians, but it could also be the philosophers and maybe perhaps the scientists and even the religious thinkers that Fresco seems to downgrade upon now while I do disagree with the churchy way of thinking and that mode of hierarchical organized religion I think that at some point it can be minarchist at best but I lean towards anarchism and we can all tell why. We see that even in the most minarchist of senses, still hierarchy it suffers from the minor disutilities or inefficiencies that you must sacrifice, that you must take one or the other when involved in the fantasy structure and what a fantasy structure revolves around. 
And that's all I gotta say, really. I could do a part three if I feel confident enough, but I feel like stepping into part three would imply moving beyond the philosophical context which this used and before the political context to really grasp a socio-economic school of thought both for the social half and the economic half for the Venus Project and I don't think that they have one in particular because Fresco doesn't like to put anything in between the lines he feels that that's not pragmatic and it sticks well with his virtues and ideas and thoughts that if you aren't absolutely sure then just say you don't know someone else will with a great mind will solve this problem and that's probably why I don't have a socio sociological school of thought, social ideology, social school of thought, or an economic school of thought. And I do this too, I don't have an economic school of philosophical thought. You could say it's Austrian, and I would go with that. You could say that, well that works for my economic free market-esque leanings. And it could also go well with my social leanings, but it doesn't move further past that. So I'm Leon Red, or Mr. Wonka 7, and I'm done. SMD, have a good night. Enjoy this video, click like. If you dislike it, tell me why. Perhaps it's the low quality. I know I used to do 480p, but my program for iMovie is glitched up. It's at the right side of my windows. I mean, not my windows, my Macintosh screen, and I'm trying to drag it to the center, but it can't even drag it's stuck here I can only raise it up or down which convolutes the shape so it's like this program never leaves the right side and I can never pull it to the center to actually use it I can never drag it and I try other methods I could tr I try that thing where I push this button and it brings up all the tabs in front of my face but even that fails to work to its most proper or efficient mode of working because it doesn't even put it to the center like the other ones so it's useless if anyone can help me out then I'd appreciate it but I've said it before and I've said it again I'm done